Hi all, yeah, here's just a quick video just for the restoration of two more Sinclair FM radio watches. So as you can obviously see, I've got three watches here. Um, this is the first watch I got um, ages ago that I've basically just been uh, restoring. Um, it's still not finished, but it's looking pretty good. And these are the two prototype Sinclair FM radio watches. You'll see that this one here is um, different in terms of it's been, mach it's been machined different, different stickers, different slightly different buttons um, but otherwise it's, it's all complete and underneath here you have another prototype um, which actually looks very 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 similar to this one here which isn't a prototype which is a normal model um, these came from one of the guys who actually developed the uh, radio tuner part in here um, I'll add details on the post um, at some point so yeah as you can see these two have got um, no strap pretty much no strap left so the straps are made out of some sort of um sort of hard, sort of semi-hard sort of latexy rubber. So they they just deteriorated. So literally that's what's left of them. So we've got a little bit left of a strap there. It's really, really useful though. And you've got a bit left um under this um clasp here. Um this one here you've got again a bit more here, bit bit left in there, and again a bit more in there. Uh, bag of bits here, including the battery cover. So what you have on this on on this uh, model is you have um, a battery mounted in there so that powers um, the radio basically and then you have another battery which is mounted um, underneath here under the four screws and there's a small battery in there and that powers the um, clock on there the clock on the light and to operate to operate it you basically um, turn this one here this dial here to switch the radio on this is your volume control and this is your tuner when you tune this it's meant to move that little bar just in there you can see as it sort of tunes between I think it's 88 and 108 FM um, this one here I mean, it had for ages um, it came in exactly the same state as this as this and what I've done basically is I've spent ages trying to locate um, the right type of straps so obviously you can't go and buy a strap for it so it has to have a strap that really has to have a channel in it like this the right sort of length obviously the right um, width here so this is a 16 mil. This is an 18 mil. 18 mil is a bit big, hence I've got little cutouts at the end. Just use a really, really, really sharp sort of scalpel, sort of knife, basically. Um, and you also have to cut out things like the plastic here, so that the clasp um, area can fit on it. Because obviously, normally the strap would be a bit, bit little bit, little bit, little bit thinner. That's also you have to cut out a little notch on there. And again, these are practice ones, but this one here is slightly better cut out underneath there, a bit neater. So again, this one here that I've got the 16 mil is actually um, obviously shorter. So all of this one here works better on the watch. It doesn't go to the full length of the um, the aerial part underneath here, which you can see there. So that's why I've changed this one here over to the 18 mil version on this end, whereas this one here is still the 16 mil. So really, you kind of want ideally a 16 mil strap, which is a bit longer, same as this um, 18 mil one, but. You know, for now, until something else comes along, I've got a bit of a combination. But I think for for this watch, this I'm going to do next. I'm just going to go probably just for two 16 mils, I think, and then potentially just fold the end over of the uh, the brass um, sort of aerial, basically, just to make it to make it work. And obviously, the clasp has to be a certain place for it to obviously fit around a man's wrist. And um, my wrist happens to be about this position here, really comfortably. So. I could go a little bit shorter if I want to, but that's a, that's a perfect length. So yeah, uh, so this watch here, the radio now works, which is, well, the radio tunes, it doesn't fully tune because inside here you've got um, two um, pins, one there and one at the top. And when you twist that dial there, it actually rotates a sheet of sort of plastic around it, which somehow touches on some sort of sense here, which I guess tunes it. I don't know a lot about it, but that's how it looks. And that's actually where it's so old. Um, it's literally a piece of really fine plastic, really, really thin sort of plasticky paper. It's um, it's obviously broken. So, you know, you might be able to get a little bit of sellotape on it or something or something along those lines. But I think it's probably too far gone to potentially repair that. But you, you do you do the um, the knob there and it adjusts um, slightly on here. Um, the clock's getting better, as you can see here. It's sort of. You can see most of the most of the parts of the digits and, and, and the light works underneath there. I'm hoping that you know with a battery on it it might suddenly start to work, but 
otherwise it's so complex inside I'm guessing it's probably if it's not going to work it's probably knackered and I don't know how easy it will be to get a replacement I'd probably very, very tricky but otherwise I'm, at least now I can actually wear it so I've, I've worn this watch to work today for the first time ever so at least I can wear it I can basically see what time it is and I can tune in a couple of channels but it just feels good when you wear it it's nice so yeah with the two prototypes um, the plan is I want to look at these two tonight um, I'm going to put a strap onto one of them, probably actually onto this one here, um, and then leave the, the, the main blatant prototype for, for later. So I'll probably put a strap on this one, just that means I can I can then handle it, because when it's when it's all like this, it's very delicate, you know, I don't want to twist anything and break any of these, because obviously they require you know, a lot more effort, a lot more skill to repair them. I'd rather handle this very carefully, and, and with a strap um, in place, it means I can pick up the watch. I can then remove the covers easy, I can you know, tr fiddle around with it, trying to get it working. So I think tonight I'll spend a couple of hours at least cut, um, trying to make these latex uh, straps work. So you basically have to sort of cut out notches in the back for the special, the really sort of random pin that holds it in place. You know, and obviously notches down here and you know, you probably have to cut out um, a little bit of a notch um, on these bits here so it's a few bits but with a scalpel you know just a few hours work really just sort of sit in there clip it all on and then hopefully once that's done then I can then start messing around with putting batteries in it you know and trying to get and trying to get the thing working um again this tuner feels very very loose so either it's working amazingly but I think it's probably knackered because again I can't see anything sort of any sort of sign of movement in there so again once the straps on I can take the cover off I can have a look in there and see if I can you know, either swap them around or take it out, fix it, or or, or whatever. You know, I mean, being a prototype, it might not even be in there, so I haven't looked yet. But this one here feels a good, good bit heavier than this one, so it's, it's nice, yeah. So yeah, that's the plan. Um, this is the original box for them here, original sort of uh, paper case, and I've got a couple of sets of instructions that came with these two as well. So that's quite nice. So yeah, we have a, few, a good few hours work, get the strap on. Uh, mounted onto that and then I can get the batteries in and see if I can get this get one of these working nice I hope you find it interesting so this is the Sinclair FM radio watch from 1985 nice one cheers